Hey guys and welcome to Fez Air Software. Today I'm going to do an internal review of this Double Bell BY012 Black AK variant. So a quick note on safety, if I'm unboxing, shooting down range, doing disassemblies, I always make sure I'm nice and safe. So I've always got eye protection on just in case something happens. Make sure mags are out and empty, and obviously unless I'm doing the shooting. Obviously that's using chrono, and make sure that there's no mag ammunition left in anything as well. So make sure you're doing the same. Hi guys and welcome back. If you do enjoy this content today, please do like and subscribe, because you're going to be really helping me out. And give me a share as well about, because that will help as well. So hopefully you've seen our recent unboxing of this where I was really impressed with this £105 budget AK and uh, today we're going to have a look at what's making it tick and just have a look at how good a quality the, inter excuse me, the internals are or are not. So obviously I'm going to drop the mag out, get that out of the way and we'll start at the front. So I'm going to do, just like in the unboxing, I'm going to remove the pin and that's coming off nice and easy and the adapter there it's come out nice and easy as well now the little pin on this model isn't coming out at all it's steam where it is that's absolutely fine i'm going to lift up the catch there and uh, the upper hand guard will come out with a little bit of uh, jigging about and we have this little lever here so i've got my screwdrivers I'm just going to lift that Handle up, and that should allow that front assembly to come forward slightly, literally a few millimeters at the most. Oh, now there's a grub screw in it as well. Now, actually, that's quite reassuring that the grub screw's in there because it's meaning that it's, uh, it's staying really secure. So, I just now I'm going to put the top cover back down just while I locate the correct size. Now, a lot of the time, a hex talk six or seven does the job on this that was a seven this is a six and the six is going to do the job so i'm not going to take it all the way out i'm just going to take it a little bit and it's moved forward and there comes the lower hand guard straight out of the way and i can get rid of it to there now by the looks of this we're going to take this body pin out here and this is going to release uh, part of this upper assembly and this body pin as well. If I wanted to take the front sight block off, it's wobbling a little bit. There are two C-clips just in there that I'd need to knock out and that front sight post would come off if I wanted it off. And you can see there that the little retaining pin for the um, muzzle brake is just on a pin there. And if I took that pin out, this would all come out as well, which is quite handy to use. Uh, no. So what I'm going to do is, based on the looks of that, I believe the teeth on this pin, if it's got teeth, are on this side. So I'm going to take it off camera and see if I can knock that through. So while I was doing that front pin, it was actually the other way. So the teeth were actually on this side and came out. In fact, that was right. So I knocked the teeth out. That doesn't go anywhere yet because it's still waiting for me to move this pin here which on this one, the teeth are definitely there. So I'm going to knock this pin out and this should release this front assembly, letting me get access to the outer barrel. Now, I was right, the teeth were on the right-hand side. That came out much, much easier. So now that should come out the way, which it did. And it gives me access to this little grub screw under here. Now, that's quite good. They've got um, this sort of blocking that keeps the hop unit pushed back against the gearbox. That's quite... Uh, reassuring as well. What I'm going to do is just while we're here, I'm just going to push this button forward and famous last words. Course. So all it is is the bar itself comes forward out to the button and then out and I can slide that out of the way and there's the assembly the spring and the rod now what I can do is I can get a screwdriver under there 
and I can just bring that out. So I'll show you the shape of that. So that is like an L shape with a notch in the corner there. And if you can see at the front of the hop unit there, it's a little bit shaped to match that. And that just keeps it pushed back against the gearbox uh, to help air seal and stabilize it all. And there's a similar sort of device underneath to help sort of blank it out a little bit to get your magazine a little bit easier and stabilize it, which is also screwed into there. So next we're gonna do the scrub screw. Need a little bit bigger. Let's try a nine, a little bit big. Torx eight it is. And you saw it spring forward there. So it wasn't particularly tight in there at all. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just obviously something to watch out for. Uh, you can see, hopefully I'll put this down a second. The spring underneath there that keeps the uh, uh, cover spring loaded. Put that out of the way now. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bring that forward and we're gonna undo these two screws here and we should be able to get the hop and barrel assembly out. If not, we might need to just maneuver the gearbox a little bit. So just got a Phillips head. There's two Phillips head screws holding the hop unit down. Now I am a little bit disappointed that the hop unit is <clears throat> this sort of clear plastic. I was hoping for when everything else is seemingly much better quality, I was hoping for a little bit more. Um, make sure that you keep <clears throat> the spring on the barrel. Let's have a look down there. So this is following the shooting test and everything. Now I can say I've not cleaned the barrel, but it is exceptionally clean down there. I'm quite impressed. So I've put the hop fully on, hopefully you can see that was lifting two fives at about, probably about 50% set. So you, you can definitely tell or know, or be reassured that it will definitely hop heavier BBs than that. So I'm quite happy with that. Standard sort of looking barrel, nothing overly amazing there. It doesn't brag to be anything more than a standard barrel. Um, there goes the button. So the button slid off the, top of the gearbox. It wasn't coming out before it does now. Now we're at to a point where we can get the gearbox out and we'll look at taking the stock off as well. So on this one, we did have a little bit of a cover that I've just popped off. And I'm gonna use my needle nose pliers to just get hold of that and remove it. Looks like Taiwan gonna have done the same with this. So got the needle nose, just gonna grab them. There we go, and just loosen it off just a little bit, and then I can unscrew it myself, like that. Now it is bringing its own selector, so I'll just get that out. So I'm just gonna lift that up. So there's the, is it actually attached? No, it's not attached, I thought it was gonna be attached then. So that goes on the inside. There's a the little brass tube, so not forgetting when we put this in, the little notch there in the top, links in with a little notch that's in that hole there. So take those out of the way. Next we'll take the pistol grip off with just a Phillips head underneath. There goes the screw. There goes the pistol grip. Now the motor looks kind of cheap. It looks like the old sort of SEMA style motors. It just doesn't look anything special. Based on the rate of fire, we know it's nothing special. But that's totally fine, we're okay with that. And now the gearbox should just jimmy its way forward. So I'm just working it up and moving it about a little bit just to make sure it's not catching on anything. There we go. Just needed jiggling about a little bit. Now, I'm gonna put that to one side a second. And we're gonna look at removing the stock as well. So at this point now then, to get this stock out, all I should need to do is knock this pin up and out because it's shaped and that should release the stock from this assembly. So I'm gonna take it off camera and knock the pin out. So do, there we are, come back. The pin wasn't shaped at all. It was actually just 
a solid single piece, but it was well wedged in at the top. So all I did was just knocked it out and uh, there it is, the stock's come off so you can replace the stock. Now you should be able to do that without removing any of the other parts that we've removed. As long as you can get access to that bottom of that pin there, you should be able to do it quite easily. So I'll put those out of the way. The body is really well made. It's really nice and solid. Um, I'm really happy with that. Um, it looks like potentially a little bit extra machines had to go off in here uh, just because it's exposed. There's no like paint work on here. So I would assume possibly realized after manufacture that things weren't quite right. The stock button was absolutely solid in there. I was really impressed with how solid that was in. And you certainly don't need to take the stock off to work on the gearbox. Now, speaking of which, we're going to zoom in now. I'm going to move my camera down and we're going to have a look at working on this gearbox. So here we've got the gearbox. I've got the selector safety, which just sits on there. And if you've seen any of my videos before disassembling, just to confirm, all of those teeth should marry up perfectly like that. They should sit in there and the little latch should sit in there. And when it's on the safe, up there like that, this trigger's solid and shouldn't be movable. Now, first sort of inspection at it, um, it doesn't look amazing quality. Now, straight away, they are bearing base. They do look like they're seven mil bearing base. I'm quite impressed with that. That's quite a cool feature. A little bit cheap on the um, cover there. Does look like they've gone the same cheap clear plastic on the nozzle. So potential, uh, particularly in the nozzle, potentially a failure point there where it could break. Now at the minute, it looks okay, but I would have said that's probably gonna be one of the first things to break. Uh, the motor itself doesn't look the best quality either. Uh, the selector looks okay, but not amazing. So let's get into the internals of this and see what's going off in here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the motor. Keep those to one side. And take the, so the black, when you're looking at the gearbox like that, the black terminal should be on the front, the red is on the back. And if you look, the motor has got a red on it to confirm which terminal is which. So just take those off there, get the motor out of the way. Now, that does, that is a quick change spring system in the back there. That is a very, very pleasant surprise. Now that's not quite big enough. So let's have a see. So it looks like a Torx 9 rough size. Should take that back plate out. So it looks like there's nothing to screw into the back of it normally. So they've just put a little plate in with a screw just to secure the spring or spring guide to the back of the gearbox. So I'll just put those out of the way and I'll get a flat head. Oops, it's easy. So flat head in and it should just be in, push in, quarter turn and out it comes. Now, wow. Okay, so we've got a bearing based metal spring guide that's quite reassuring there's our spring it's quite a tough spring so i'm expecting that the um compression in here is not going to be great next thing i'm just going to push this off the top here this um there we go this metal framework making sure that i don't catch and uh, cut through any of the shield shrouding on the wire and then i'm going to remove part of the selector here remember when you're reassembling it that the way these three teeth here should marry up perfectly with the teeth on this little um, connector this little half gear so undo that take that out of the way now some of this build is absolutely impressing me no end and other parts and they're like oh. you know they've put seven mil bearings in there but then use cheap clear plastic for other bits and you just kind of have to think well why not just, you know, for the sake of a, a few pennies extra in quality materials, go the whole hog. But for £105, let's not forget that, £105, it's a little bit of a bargain. So I'm removing the screws. I think I need an electric screwdriver just to make this part easier. 
So they're off. Now, I don't need to brace down in the back because the spring and the tension of the spring's gone, although the trigger will still ping. The gear there is sticking. Let's just push that down. There we go. So they've kind of gone for the paintbrush approach with the grease by the looks of it, which is fine. You know, it's, it's working. And if you're a sort of a maintenance kind of nut, then I would say you're probably going to strip it down and clear it out anyway. Now, based on the shooting, I would have said they've made a half decent attempt at shimming there. Uh, they have, again, continued with the paintbrush approach. Now, the gear set doesn't look amazing quality. It looks fairly standard in, in line with what we see in a lot of the seamers, particularly the sort of the budget end seamers. This white plastic tappet, I'm not 100% happy with that. Um, and, and I'm definitely not happy with the clear air nozzle. I would definitely be replacing this, um, <clears throat> excuse me, at some point. So let's lift the cylinder assembly out and see what we're looking like here. So you've got a red piston with a tooth missing at the back, obviously intentional, so they've, they've removed that, that tooth there, I assume to help with angle of engagement. So it's vented because it's a shorter barrel. So, ooh, there's actually, I'm really struggling, it's still going in, but I'm really struggling to get that. That's actually, that's, I'm, wow, I'm, I am, wow, I did not expect that good of a, a compression in there. Let's have a look and see if there's any sort of compression when the air nozzle's on. Obviously, we knew it wouldn't have quite as good an air, air compression anyway. It's still going in, but there is definitely air pressure there, so there is some sort of seal there. Um, that's actually looking pretty good. Um, um, there are some mixed bags in here, but you know, for a, a couple of pounds worth of spares, you know, a new tappet plate um, from Taiwan gun or, or even in the UK is usually about £10 at the very, very most. An air's nozzle is probably, you know, five, six pounds at the very, very most. And you, you're going to have something that's probably going to run almost indefinitely, you know. All right, the quick change spring you can't get to without sort of stripping it down. And I get that, that, you know, that, okay, that's fine. But the fact that I don't have to fully dismantle the gearbox to change the spring is pretty cool, you know, and I can have it out in a few minutes, especially because I'm so used to doing it, I suppose. Um, the motor, I would probably change again. The motor can be changed without even taking all of this out of the gun. You just take the pistol grip off, undo the motor cage, and you can change the motor in there. Um, this is looking pretty damn good, actually, for £105. A little bit of work to do to sort of meet up with what um, SEMA are doing with their sort of lower end stuff, but then they all have plastic bodies. Um, you know, this is it's fairly fairly solid and, and a decent offering for the price of it. The hop unit, I would possibly look to change as well, although it does look like it's going to serve its purpose for a while, and it definitely was solidly held into that block. Those screws, you know, and, and with the um, retaining uh, block there, that thing's going nowhere. Um, so, wow, just, it's impressed me no end, this. Really, really impressed me. So I'm going to rebuild this, and then in a follow-up video to this, I've got some nice uh, ex externals that I'm going to sort of modernise it to. So let's make a start with this then. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring back the cylinder assembly. It's part of the uh, reassembly, and I'm just going to hook the spring on there. So as you can see there, I've hooked the spring on there. In fact, what I'm going to do first... Oh, there's even a delayer chip. So this little chip here is used to delay um, the... Um, or engage the tappet plate early and stop it going back in quite as soon. And that generally helps with feeding issues. Um, so you get these quite often, and particularly on higher end builds and things. So what I've done there is I've moved the teeth so they're away from the piston because we don't want them engaging with the piston, uh, obviously, during the re reassembly. The shimming doesn't look too bad. In fact, I'll tell you what, let's just have a quick look underneath. Now, there are some signs of wear just on the inside of the these teeth here, just onto the flat of the gear uh, on the bottom row, but nothing terrible. Um, the cutoff lever looks fairly good quality. The trigger block, not amazing, but again, it, nothing's terrible quality, you know, horrific, except for maybe the air nozzle. Um, it's for £105, I am so impressed, so impressed. Right, so I'm going to hook that on and I'm going to push that back. And seat that into position there and that seat's 
nicely into position. I've made sure that the piston is in its tracks there and I've put the end of the tappet plate around so the teeth can move around. And as you can see there, the uh, delay the, uh, chip is sort of just starting to engage it. So I'm happy with that. The other thing I like to make sure I do is I'm gonna just pull this spring down as far as it can go. So I know it's not gonna suddenly pig on and it also helps to keep the, so I'll move that up leaning quite far over my table so i've pushed that spring right down there and that helps to keep this flat and down uh, as far as it can go next thing i'm going to bring back my anti-reversal latch which is looks like it's on oh brilliant look see it's on a nice little soft spring there so look that's not too much hassle i'm not gonna lie double bell you're doing all right in my books popped up there there we go so, now we're ready to put the side on. So I'm just gonna lift this over carefully and I'm just gonna gently drop it down into place. Now that's jumped straight onto the gears. It's just the trigger that needs, needed a little bit of working about to drop in. And it's not the best sort of casting. There's obviously a little bit of machine work going off just to smooth things off. But it's, it's, I would say it's definitely competing with the, the sort of budget seamer stuff at, at the bare minimum. <clears throat> it's competing with the budget seamer stuff. So I'm just going to screw all my screws back in. So the little short one went right at the front in this front lug here. And then you've got three longer ones that go just at the front here in front of the trigger. That's it. You got one just behind the trigger there. Turn that down. And then you got one just at the back of the gearbox here. Make sure that you twist partly back until you get the click so you know that you're into the threads properly because you don't want to uh, screw up your threads. And if it's tough to screw that in, then you're not in the threads properly and you could be uh, causing damage to the threads in that hole, which longer term could cause other issues. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this um, retaining clip in. And as I slide it in, I'm just gonna feed the wiring underneath just gently like that, not to damage it. And it sits, hopefully you saw that. So just slide, slid it in, making sure that it comes all over that little clip there. That's looking nice. Next bit I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring back in this protection cover that goes over this gear here. Nice and easily fit. So obviously keeping our fingers out of that gear and keeping general gunk out of that gear. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the spring back in and the spring guide. Use the, oops, use the screwdriver. No, no, I'm just gonna push it in. And I'm just gonna, so I push that in, quarter twist it, and it locked into place. And then I'm gonna bring in the blank plate, the, the securing plate that they put on. And I'm gonna put the screw in. Now don't forget, I used a Tox 9 for this, but it does look like it's a hex head. I just find that the uh, Tox heads get a little bit better to purchase. That must have been the 9. So I just had to screw that back a little bit just to get it back into where it should be, into the uh, threads properly, because uh, I started tightening it down and it wasn't, uh, it was too tough to screw in, which meant I was going to ruin the thread. So I've tightened that down. That's keeping that nice and secure. Get those out of the way. This gearbox is actually going back together rather nicely. So next I'm going to bring in the motor uh, and I'm going to put the wires back on first before I do. So red on the red terminal, black on the uncolored terminal, and then we can screw it in. So I'm just gonna pop that one on there. 
Now, just off camera then, just for a few seconds, and the uh, connectors just needed the needle nose pliers just sort of putting on the end and just pushing down, which means that they've got a really snug, tight, secure fit, which is obviously quite reassuring. Then what I've also done is the wires, you can see there, I've put them in this track, which sort of keeps them positioned and out in the correct place where they should be to keep them out of trouble and stop them from getting damaged and snagged on anything else. Then I'm going to bring in the screws and screw these back in. There we go, it's looking better and better. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is the selector. So we've got these two little halves to it. So this end goes in on the right hand side here. And if you remember, we had to make sure that all those teeth marry up together like that, which they do. Perfect. So leave that like that. And come through there. Flip it over. Now this, if you look, it's shaped on the inside to match the shape there, to match the sort of the cone shape of the screw that we're going to drop in. Tighten that down, and what I like to do is, oops, so that just look, because I wasn't holding that in quite properly, there we go, and drop that back into place. What I like to do is, as it's tightening, it will naturally, with the force of it, twist against this lug here, which is fine. I'm just using that to sort of get the tension on it. So that's next part done, and I am happy with that. Let's just check. No, nope, we're good. We're ready to proceed to putting it back into the body. So next part then is I'm just going to drop it back into the body. Now, it's going to take a little bit of potentially weaving about to get it to sit in nicely and get it in the right place. There we go. So it's now sat in perfectly and we should have it in the right place. I've not put the select on when the selector's seen there properly. Fairs, that's a, and I call myself an AK lover and I can't believe I forgot to put the selector part back on. I should hang my head in shame. Hello AK lovers, I am sorry. Please forgive me. Okay, so the safety cutoffs now now in there. That's still married up. And then I'm gonna do it again. I'm just gonna drop that in there. Wiggling it around, and I'll know it's in the right place because it will just sort of drop in. There we go. And that is what we want to see in that hole, is that a that little notch there ready for the selector. Now I've just noticed, look, that plastic cover is coming off. It's catching because it's slightly deformed. That's a little bit of a worry. Oh, there we go. I've knocked it back into place just using my fingers. Again though, look, it's coming out again. Let's see if I can manipulate that. There we go. So I've just sort of moved it about with my screwdriver and got it back in position. So it's obviously something to watch out for and be wary of. Next thing I'm going to do is, well, this is like this. I'm going to put the pistol grip back on. And that just slides up, sits in position. And while I'm at it here, I'm going to put the charging handle in, which sits in at the back there and just slides forward. That's just to make it easier on us in a minute. So I'm going to flip that over. I'm going to knock it out. Just in case you're wondering why I'm, I mean, I'm naturally clumsy anyway, but I'm actually stood up, leant over a table at a really funny angle. So it uh, it's not easy. My back is burning at the minute from uh, leaning right over. But never mind. Or is it artists should suffer for their art? So put the selector in, right way up. And uh, obviously the little connector on there sits in there. Okay, the selector sits on there. 
little brass tube goes in there and then we bring the screw in and we tighten that down now i'm going to come back and tighten that more thoroughly in a few minutes and it's in the right position because we've got safe pull pull i'm happy with that at the minute next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to get the uh, charging handle spring that rolled away and there it is so just feed that back onto there <clears throat> that's going to go into the little hole inside the charging handle there and we're going to drop the button back in place and that's going to go in there there we go and our charging handle is back in place happy days so we're getting there slowly but surely Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to feed the hot back in. There's a spring. Now, for now, I can slide that back on once that's in place. Now, what you might need to do is, at this stage, I'm just going to pull the nozzle back, and that was just stopping it dropping into place properly onto its little block. So I'm just going to there we go. So I'm just going to slide the hop unit back and the block back, and then I'm going to put the screws back in to retain the hop unit into there. Before I do that, in fact, no, I will. So again, I just turned backwards before I started going forwards, just so I know it's going to go into its uh, threads and then the other screw at this stage the charging handle might be a little bit in your your way but you should be able to there we go worst case scenario if it is in your way you can take the rod out and you can slide the charging handle back just enough that you can get in to do the screw there. Go back forward. That spring can go in. And it can go into the button there. It's looking good. Next stage then is uh, we're going to brace the hop unit back against the body. And that literally just clicks into place there. So it's making sure that it's staying nice and secure against the body i'm going to slide that spring back in onto the barrel i'm going to bring the barrel back in which is orientated that way for the front side up and the barrel slides in now it should only go so far in and then stop which is what we want and next thing i want to do is i'm just going to take this off camera i'm just lining up and it allows me, there we go, there we go. So down that hole there, I'm just lining up the barrel so that the hole is consistent all the way through. And then I'm just gonna put this pin back in to secure this part. Take this off camera and knock this back in. So just put that pin back in so the teeth are on this right hand side. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten down this um, grub screw on the top here. There we go. So I'm just going to tighten that grub screw down to keep that nice and secure. Next thing I do is I can bring this assembly back in. We can now put this little pin back in as well. I'm going to take this off camera again and just put that in. I've got those pins in now. So that top cover will happily lock back down in place because obviously we've got the charging handle in there as well. I am going to secure this down now because we've got most of the front end back on. So I'm just going to get my needle nose on the edge and just nip it tight. And I can put the cover back on if I want. I'm not sure why that's on there, but 
put it on there anyway. And then all that's left is just getting the hand guards back in and then the stock in a moment, which I'll show you. So first of all, then we'll do the lower hand guard. So this little lever here goes there and slides straight out as it does. So the hand guard then sort of semi clips into the body in like that, then comes backwards. Now, I'm going to have to put that handle back in again. There we go. So, hand guard goes in at the back and on. A little cover, a little retainer. Comes forward, there we go. I'm just going to flip the lever up and over. There is a little bit of tension to it. No, there's not. I've got a look. And I need to tighten the group screw down in there as well. That's nice and tight. The upper hand guard can now go on. And uh, I can tell which end it is because there's a little mark there from this pin and the circular end goes to there. So I'm just gonna pop up the cover, click that down, that goes in. I've now got the converter there that goes onto the 40 mil negative. And then I've got the outer muscle brake to go back on there. do that and then last but not least we're going to do the stock so to do the stock I'm just going to pop the top cover and there you can see we've got easy access to the pin so I'm going to put the stock in place we're just going to line all the hinges up and then the pin is just going to knock him down I'm going to take this off camera to do it so that pin nicely just dropped in through the first two and then just needed a bit of knocking in through the second one. The stock's now on there, working as intended. Would have liked a little bit tighter retention against there. And there we go. Done and finished internal review. So I hope that's been helpful to you. Uh, please do remember to like, comment and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye.